I have been so excited to share this game with y'all. Man of Lords, I got an early access key to it by Hooded Horse, so thank you to Hooded Horse. Today we're just going to go through, do some gameplay, have fun. Should be a good time, so let's start a new game. think that today we'll play as him. Albrecht is a great name. For our background color, I personally like teal, as that's my favorite color. Then we can go with this and go for black as our another, other color. As you can see, they have a ton of options, so everyone should be able to find something that makes them happy. They even have options down here to affect the tiling, angle, number of instances, and scale. So, honestly, I don't really want a symbol. We'll just have it nice and clean like that. Then we have three options for our scenario templates. We have Rise to Prosperity, Restoring the Peace, and On the Edge. This just has a bunch of bandits. This one we have to fight a Baron who is located off the map, but he has two territories under his control. And this one is just raising a town from nothing. So I do want to show off the combat, so definitely let's do Restoring the Peace. We can fight off the Baron and claim those territories. And Relaxing, honestly, I'd suggest for anyone starting the game, try out Relaxing. It's nice. Challenging is actually a bit challenging, if you can believe it, and may actually require a build order. We're going to go with a nice middle section default. These are all the settings. I won't go through them, but feel free to pause and look at them. They're pretty self-explanatory. I do apologize if I sound weird. I do have a cold, so I'm trying to take it easy, but um, I really am excited to show this game to y'all today. So we are in the game. We have our little thing of homeless camps. And let me just say, the graphics in this game are absolutely gorgeous, man. Look at this, just unbelievable. You can zoom out all the way and see all of the other territories. It's just an amazing game. So, you're located right here. We have a new message. Build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claims towards the regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. So I think that this gameplay series will probably go until we finish claiming the enemy territories and have a pretty good sized town going. That's my goal for this series. So in Manor Lords, families need food and fuel and a roof above their head. Supplies in the region panel shows how much you've got left. So up here we have our unassigned families, assigned families, living space, total population with five level one families, our approval rating, public order, regional wealth, livestock, and number of months before supplies run out for the food and fuel consumption. And then we also have our construction. These are basically just all our materials. We can go through that later. So as you can see, we have a hitching post and our homeless people tents, and we have some issues up here. So first of all, we have our exposed goods on our supplies, and we have our exposed good for the pantry. So let's fix those issues first. First thing we're going to do is go into construction and check what the different fertility is on our map. So we basically can't grow any flax, can't grow any barley. Our rye is decent and our emmer is pretty bad as well. So we're going to be going for rye, which we can get eventually by going up here and unlocking it in our development. So rye is right there. But that is for a later date. I was just checking that to see where we don't want to build, which actually is where our town is on, unfortunately. So um, I probably will be moving over towards this way while we're building. And that works well, too, because it's towards the rich animal deposits anyways. So what I'm thinking is, is we will build our storehouse, our granary, and our storehouse over here so we can build a road some workplaces allow villagers to use hand carts to transport goods but you need a road to do that so we will do that to there and then over to here and it is slightly annoying because we won't be able to see anything for a while but that is okay Let's build our pantry and our storehouse right next to each other. And we will build another hitching post as well, as we will want more than just the one that we have. So timber, basically what you use to build all your buildings, requires oxen to be moved. 
and villagers will automatically get the ox when they need it, so you don't have to assign anyone to the hitching post. We won't worry about that right now. So we can zoom in and we can see our ox dragging over a log and we have our villagers walking over to help build our buildings that are right here. So the next <laughs> show of business is we need to build a logging camp and gathering. And let's put on our rye fertility thing just again to double check that we're not screwing anything over. So yeah, this should be fine. We will build a road over from here this way. And on this, at the end of this road, we can build our logging camp. This should clear up some brush. I don't know if it'll actually get rid of anything, but it'll make it a little bit easier for us to see. Now that we have a logging camp and two storehouses underway, we might actually speed it up a little bit. As you can see, we can go down here and watch them start building this up. have those AoE, Age of Empires animations, but honestly, it looks great. I love it. So they're transporting the goods over. As you can see, we still need like six more or five more stone. But we have the two logs. We have a new message. So this is from the Baron. I have heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some may have spread about me. By Hildevad von Baronut. I don't think we are going to respond to him right now. That is okay. Where did our village go? What uh, We are over here. Oops. It looks like one of our buildings is done and we can assign a family and they will start moving our exposed goods over to the pantry. Sorry about that. <laughs> we can watch them build the storehouse as well. So while they're building that, let's start planning our next move. To build more things, we will we'll need the logging camp. So I'm actually gonna change this to the highest priority so that we can assign somebody to start cutting down trees around there. So after we have the logging camp, we're going to need a woodcutter's lodge. We'll need a saw pit. We're definitely going to want to get a hunting camp up on our animals over here. And then eventually we're going to want to build our houses. So I might actually speed it up all the way to 12 times just for now to let our guys start building. Something that's very cool is you can actually join in in third person. I think that's something that is just so unique for this game. Anyways, let's go back to 12 times speed, get our logging camp underway. And it looks like we need one more log. So our ox will bring it over. Let's change this hitching post also to highest priority. Okay. Now that our logging camp is done, let's add probably two people to it. And if you go to the advanced tab, you can actually show the work area. And I want it to cut down basically all the trees around our stuff. Got our guys chilling around the campfire. Right now we're just waiting for more timber. We can actually add another person to our long camp for now. Let's see how our hitching post is doing. Okay, we can order another ox and this will just allow us to build things much faster. As you can see, our regional wealth went down from 50 to 30, and we only have two months of food left. So our next goal here is to get some food. So let's put a hunting camp down right next to all of those, and then we can connect our road all the way over here. It is unfortunate that it's so far away, but it's just how it goes sometimes. 
we can definitely build towards our hunting camp. And eventually we'll put down a berry thing as well. We actually have the wood for it as well. Can we connect it with another road as well. I am going to let us build up on logs just for a little bit. And eventually that will allow us to max out on logs and build a bunch of stuff. I assigned guys to the storehouse so that they move our other goods over. Basically, if you leave your goods out in the rain, they will be destroyed. So We have our hunting camp, so we can assign one person there. Our greenery should have everything moved over, so we can unassign that person so that we have someone to build stuff. And we're not actually going to put anyone in our berry camp for a little bit. Our next order of business is to get a woodcutter's lodge. We're going to want a saw pit as well, so we'll put that right next to the logging. And eventually we'll want a forester's hut, but not yet. We don't have to worry about mining yet. We do want a well. And just put that right there. And I think it is almost time for us to start building our residential area, which I was planning on doing over here, actually. So the first thing that I like to do when building a residential area is set up a marketplace for our houses. So I'll do this, like that, and back to there. And I'll, let's go back to here and just make this a little bit bigger, like that. Then we have our marketplace here, so we can go to our residential area and set up our marketplace. So if we look like that, we can go over like that, over, and we will have a bunch of rooms for a lot of stalls. <laughs> So a well-supplied marketplace is the lifeblood of your town. Assigned families will set up stalls automatically as long as there's enough space on the market. And then we can hover over specific categories, which I will show you all later, as we don't have any houses yet. So our next order of business, really, is to put down some houses, honestly. I will put that right there for now. I'm going to go out like this as well, as I think that will look pretty decent. Ooh. Yeah. So let's put down some houses. And the housing mechanics in this game are so interesting. Basically, you put how long it is, and it's a plot where you just put four points. And I'll show you why this matters. So this is how long we can have the plot for. Actually, while I'm explaining this, I'll put it on to four times speed. So with these plots, you get four points, and then it changes different things depending on those points. So as you can see, we have the four houses and then expansion slot, or not expansion slots, but basically they're like garden slots in the back. So we can make that, if you make it too short, then you'll only have the houses, but if we do it like that, then we'll have about perfect for the size of plots that we want. One other thing to note is you can actually change how many houses you want in the thing. And as you can see, if you change it down, this allows for an expansion slot, which actually allows for you to have two families in the same house. I want four houses. I think that looks good as it is. We will build those right there. And we actually want three more houses after this. So, oh, that's a marketplace. My bad. I was going to say that should be about... Three houses, we can put them right there. And one of them will even have an expansion slot. And that will give us enough houses for all of our people plus two. You can get two extra people per month. Uh, two extra families if your approval rating is above 75%. As you can see, we still have all our homeless people. So we'll have to work on that for a little bit. So we had our resources stolen by nearby bandits. That's very unfortunate as pelts are actually important. They're over there. Eventually, we will build up an army to go kill them, but for now, we're just going to have to chill and let them steal stuff from us.
So homeless will move to the plot, and if approval rating is high enough, it may, might attract new families too. Families need more than just space. You can click on the houses, as in most games, and see what they require. So we're going to need a church and then fuel, food, and clothing. So I built it here, so I was thinking of putting the church right there. However, to build the church, we will need a lot of planks, which is why we built the saw pit. What we can do is we can actually take one of the people off of our logging camp and put them on the saw pit so that we can get up to 20 uh, planks. The one thing that is unfortunate is when you're in third person, the no, game will only go at one time speed. So I won't spend too much time like this, but I am thinking about putting out a video, probably maybe later today or tomorrow, of just walking around in third person in one of my bigger cities and showing it off because I think that would be pretty cool. But you can't actually go into houses or anything, at least not yet. But you can definitely walk around and it is very cool. We have our first market places showing up and they will yell at you which is pretty cool but this looks like our fuel stand and over here is our uh, food stand anyways let's speed it back up and check how many planks we have we have five planks right now <coughs> there is a glitch right now where it always says that the generic storage is full for the saw pit i'm not sure why it always says that but it definitely does so we need our one last baggage plot and we'll be good on the homelessness. And once we get to 20 planks, I'm actually going to take him off of there again, just so that we can put him into some other stuff, as we will need a tannery over here as well. So we got a new development point because basically we had enough baggage plots to upgrade our village. So... <coughs> We need rye for this to be successful uh, so that we can have farm plots and stuff. We don't necessarily need it, but it is useful. So what I would say is we're going to go for orchardry, which eventually goes to rye cultivation. Orchards allows, allows you to build an orchard in the back of your burgage plots, and it produces apples after a while. So we will go down this path for now. And we have a new message. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you will now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. So let's form this militia. It's pretty easy. You just press V, army down here, and you can create a new militia. We have spears, so we'll make a new spear militia. Basically, the male villagers will be evenly distributed between all militia units. Then they will try to find the required equipment. We were given the spears in this case. And then after bringing all the necessary equipment home, the unit recruits are marked as ready to rally. So that made it, and we will eventually call on it if we need our militia. So our homeless problem has been taken care of. We have enough planks to where we can take our guy off of the plank thing. And we can start to build our church, as that is one of our, our residential requirements. So, I just put down our church. And basically, we will put this to our highest setting. We can take our person off of the saw pit, put it back on 12 times. And now that we have two people building, we'll watch them build, and then we will move someone back to our hunting place. As you can see, our goal is to fill in all of these to raise our approval rating so that we get more families to move in. So we need to fill in our church level, and then we will need a second type of food, and then we will need a clothing supply. The way to do the clothing supply is we're going to need to build a tannery right there, but we will build that after we build the church. I love the building animations in this game. They really do look very nice. It does look a little bit weird at 12 times speed, but that is okay.
and it looks like our church is almost done. So as you can see, if we go over to our plot, it shows at least a wooden church has been built. So our next order of business is to build a tannery. We'll also put one person there as well. Fortunately, just had more resources stolen by bandits. Very unfortunate. But nothing we can do about that right now. Let's go in here and see if we can brush around, brush away any shrubbery just to make our city look a little bit better. like right well that'll all be taken care of anyways so let's get that timber as well we'll move this to this oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that I meant to move it over so it's closer to our stuff let's see if our tannery is done it is so close that to the highest and we can put. Oh, not yet. I think our logging camp should be basically good. We don't really need more logs right now. We can take this person off of logging, put them into wood cutting, and then we're pretty much good on everything except we need the clothing stall. To do that, you need the tannery. And so now our goal is we want to have two more families move in so that we have enough people to do other stuff around while also having high approval rating. And once you have all these filled in, you can actually upgrade your Burgish plots to level two. <laughs> However, we don't want to do that right now because if we upgraded our Burgish plots to level two, our approval rating would actually go down as they want more things, which is, it's a little bit weird. Um, I don't know how I feel about it really, but it's just how it, it's just how it goes. So right now we're waiting for I guess we just need our clothing stall. It should be ready almost very soon. Yeah, we're slowly building up our leather. Have any clothing in it yet? But we have the stall, and that's all we need. As you can see, for the first time in a while, our approval rating has climbed over 52%. can just chill in the center of our village, say hello to the peeps. Really there's nothing we can do right now except wait for more families to join as we need all five of our families where they're assigned to be able to keep growing our approval rating. Ah, the work area is empty for the forger hut so we can actually take this person off now I think. And it might still be fine, maybe not. Oh man, we were just one off from having our approval high enough to get a new family. Very unfortunate. Let's see what happens if we take them off. I think that if we put them on the granary then, then they should go gather food and still have a supply thing here. That should be good. So hopefully our approval rating is high enough at the end of this next month to gain another family. As otherwise it will be rough to grow anymore. The weather effects in this game are absolutely gorgeous, man. Look at this. Let's put it on slow, just for a second. The ambiance in this game is just unmatched. Okay. 
So hopefully our approval rating is high enough this time as to we will actually get a new family to move in. I think it will be. Unfortunately, it goes down at the end of each month, weirdly. I'm not actually sure why that is, but at the end of October, you'll see it go down. There we go. We got our first family moving in. Thank goodness. So we have six families now, which means that we have one family to actually build things with while all our families make sure that our approval rating is high enough to continue to get new families. So actually our first order of business is to build more houses because we only have one more open slot for another family within the next month. So let's build here. Honestly, we can build all the way over. What, too steep to build. I've actually never encountered that in this game before. Too steep still. About like this. Still too steep. Wow, okay. Um, what if we try over here? There we go. That's good. So we won't actually have the backyards, but honestly, it's not really the end of the world. We build those there. I guess we're just not building anything. Can we build like this? That's a marketplace. We tried to do this. So that works. So why was it too steep the other way? That's so weird. Um, if we go like this. Well, that works. Need to not snap to roads is what we need just for Ugh. anyways so we hunt another family while we we're messing around with that so that's good to see as well let's just build some houses on the other side and not deal with this too steep issue generally i think this should be about big enough we can rotate them around like that maybe look like that it'll cost 10 but they will all have the expanded areas for more people we can add someone back into our logging as well because we have the extra family now and this town is doing very well we should survive our first winter quite easily as you can see we have 19 months of food 13 months of fuel lots of firewood for our fuel lots of berries and meat so our next goal is to, to get to where we can start upgrading our burgage plots and not have issues uh, when we upgrade. And I don't actually know what the requirements are once we upgrade to level two. So well, I'm not gonna do it quite yet. I'm gonna try to build out our industry a bit more and build out how many people we have and eventually I will do that. So it does look like we can expand the place. Or no, one of these had an expansion in it. Uh, this one, we can just double the family count that can fit in the burgage plot for two wood, which is not a big deal at all. And as you can see, we have our burgage plots coming up here. So I am thinking that that was a mistake. I meant to actually go for charcoal, but that's okay. We can do that next time. So I'm thinking we should get up to maybe about 10 or 11 to 12 families before we upgrade our British plots anymore. We can build a trading post, though I think it has to be connected to the main road for it to work. So what we can do is we can actually bring this road all the way down <coughs> and connect it there. And then uh, let us just have our training post out here. Uh, we have to go back to snap to road. And yeah, I think that looks good.
So while we have some time, let's look through what we can all build. So we have logging camps, woodcutter lodges, swap pits, forester lodges, which rebuild the new trees so you can have infinite trees. Then we have hunting camps, forager huts. We can mine stone and mine iron ore and clay. We have logistics where we have the granary, storehouse, basically all things you've already seen. We have a residential we built the well early on, along with our burgage plots, the marketplace. Taverns are for a bit later, and then we have the wooden church and the corpse pit. And moving on to farming, we have our fields and our farmhouse, which we will get into a bit later, along with the sheep farm windmill and the communal oven. Industry, we have a variety of things such as dyes, linens, um, hides, we already have that. We can make malt with our malt house, the clay furnace, smithy, and a bloomery. Finally, we have our trading post, which we just built, and the administration. So we have nine families now. We should have a fair amount of living space. We don't need to build any more of that right now. And basically, in the trading post, the way it works is you have to assign someone to it, and then you can make these trades, but first you have to open a trade route. The first number is how much it sells for, the second number is how much it, uh, you can buy it for. And I find that generally I'll have to import crops to make a big enough village and I try to find stuff that exports for quite a bit. So as you can see, wooden parts are a very nice export, but basically everything else isn't very nice. Um, I exported shoes in my last playthrough, and that went very well. And then also small shields seem to be a good export as well. But it's going to be a little bit of time till we get there. As we need to let our families build up just a little bit longer. Just so that when we upgrade our Burgage Plots to level 2, um, <laughs> we have enough families to basically do everything. So we can actually zoom out and look at our clay deposit. And put a mining... Oop, let me just slow that down. put a mining thing on that and then connect it to our road hmm. then let us also Put down an iron thing so we can start mining that, so we can start building weapons and the like. Alright, let's get one more family and then we will start upgrading all of our buildings. One thing we do want to upgrade though, is we're going to need to upgrade our granary and our storehouse eventually. So it looks like we're going to need some more planks for that, which is totally fine. We can actually take this person off of the logging camp for right now. Stop it, and this shouldn't have a limited work area anymore. Okay, so we have 12 people. We should be good to go up to our next thing. Let's just start upgrading, honestly. Oh, and I guess we will need the extra log cutter because we're about to use a ton of logs. out of wood already unfortunately it's okay we can actually put just three people on our logging camp <clears throat> and continue to upgrade our burgage plots to level two but as you see as soon as you know all of these upgrade to level two you will find that <clears throat> um, our approval rating starts to lose so be very careful when upgrading your burgage plots to early as you won't be able to gain any new families if you upgrade them like that. 
which I don't know how I feel about that. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit wonky how you have to wait to gain enough families to be able to safely upgrade your baggage plots, but that's just how it is for right now. So we will do this eventually, but I want to save our money uh, just so that we can upgrade, or not upgrade, so that we can get a trade route started eventually. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Just take a look at that army, and that's fine, we can go right back. <coughs> Should still have two types of food at the market. I don't know why this. Continue to upgrade them, and basically, what happens when you upgrade them is level two burgage plots generate one regional wealth per family per month. So it's very nice as we will start getting more regional wealth. And while this is a decent like way of getting wealth, it's really not the best. Trade is really the best. But as you can see, we have finally gone our charcoal burning and this will be a great way of making money at least that's what I expect so charcoal burning it allows a new building the charcoal kiln which converts one firewood into two charcoal making refueling twice as efficient I believe that's in it's not in industry where is it I feel like I'm blind right now I'm totally gonna be blind there it is um Honestly, right here should be fine. But as you can see, our level 2 burgage plots are causing loss of approval. As we need to upgrade our church, we need a tavern, and we will need another type of food as well as more clothes. <coughs> It may just have like just been on challenging where you had to wait to upgrade your burgage plots as it looks like our approval is actually fine for now. But I was definitely having a bunch of issues with that earlier. Start upgrading some of these. Just watch as they build everything. But eventually, what I'm thinking we're going to do is in trade, we can go to charcoal. Where is charcoal? There it is. And it sells for five, which is really, really good. So we'll open that trade route eventually and start selling charcoal once it's done. Actually, let's make that the highest priority thing right now. Just fine. And there is a reason to build your marketplace in the center of your town. Basically, the houses that are closest to your marketplace will get first come, first serve priority. So it is important to have um, <clears throat> like all your houses pretty close to it. Where is our stone out property? That is something we need to get as well. There we go. Okay. Now we can connect that with the road as well. <laughs> Quite a long one, but that is okay. We have a large storehouse now. And our pantry will um, grow slower, but definitely will still grow. Let's look. Our wild animals are maxed out right now, as you can see the hunting limit is 10. Our berry doesn't seem to be filled with anyone, and we'll also want to build the garden now, just to keep our families healthy. And we can put someone in the charcoal kiln as well. I do believe that it takes wood, so let's make sure we have, yeah, we're good on the logging camp as we have people in there as well. <laughs> and I do think it is about time to build a couple more hitching posts, as we are going to need the extra oxen.
And as you can see, we're starting to get a steady supply of income. Right now it looks like we just need more wood. Something since we have the income right eh, no, I'll wait. Once we get the charcoal going, let's see how much charcoal we have. We're just building so much stuff right now that our wood is just being completely used up very quickly. And we only have two oxen to move it around as well. So nice, man. It looks like our... Yeah, we upgraded again, actually, before I even noticed. But that is okay. Let's get someone in there. We have 16 families and 18 houses, so we actually need to build more houses soon as well. It shouldn't be an issue at all. Actually, what we can do is we can start seeing if any of these have expansions. I'm pretty sure they do. We can also upgrade them. We just still don't have enough timber. I wonder if it's a like fuel supply thing or not. I don't know. I don't know why they're... It's, I f honestly feels like they're gathering wood really slowly. I'm just gathering it, or using it as fast as they're getting it. But we, we do need more houses, so I'll just put down some more houses for now. Yeah, okay, that's just all too steep, which is fine. It's a little bit weird, so I wasn't expecting it, but we can just build this one. And actually, let's build a road around first just for a quick maneuverability. Quite the bustling city. It's looking great right now, actually. I do wish that they would sell the firewood first and not the charcoal. This is an issue that I didn't think about. What I could do is instead of going for the firewood at all, I could only build. Uh, on my word. Storage is full on the stone cutter. I need to add like one person to the large storehouse, one person to the granary. No, we don't need one more in the granary. Oh, we might want to upgrade the granary. I assume someone will come over to move it. It's just really far away. Let's just put all three into the charcoal. No, honestly, we don't even need that. Um, and what we can add on now, because it's been a while, is we can actually put it in the forester's hut and it will just keep us having a nice forest around our logging camp. And we do need to start worrying about building up to the way the point where we can build a new armories as well, actually. now. So we should have a pretty good income from that. Let's see what they require to be absolutely happy so we can upgrade them to the next level. We need <coughs> a tavern. Unfortunately we will need barley though for that which we will have to import so we need a good income before we can do 
the tavern. However, we can look to upgrading our church, as that should be easy. And then clothing, we'll need shoes, and then three types of food. So we need 10 clay tiles. Pretty sure we've been, we haven't been collecting clay, but we can put someone there. I'll fix that. We put someone in the mining pit as well. And then uh, in our industry, we will build the clay furnace. Right there. I don't see any reason not to put it there just because we can't put houses there anyways. We have 18 families with 25 living space, so we're doing great on living space. I would say that now that we have a decent income, we can actually put out some eggs and that will give us our third type of food. Interesting, water brand is being claimed. I didn't actually know that the enemy warlords would claim other lands. Very interesting. Okay. There's nothing I can do about that right now, just because we don't have the industry to support an army to fight it. However, we will eventually. I do think that eventually we're going to want two charcoal pits, just because we will be exporting it a fair amount as well. Where is... I can never find it. It's over here, right? Yeah. I'd actually put it just like... We'll be exporting it anyways. Honestly, we should put the forest hut up in priority. And we actually got more hitching posts, and I completely forgot to order more oxes. Just didn't... Put one more person in there. I can look to start upgrading this. someone in our clay furnace so that eventually we can upgrade our wooden church as well to a stone church and so we have our little chicky coops here and these chickens will allow us to make eggs as you can see in our food and those will be a third food to be sold on our marketplace We have 19 families, 26 housing. We're still doing it just fine on that. <clears throat> Let us open our first trading thing. And we are going to trade our charcoal. We need 30 gold for that, so we will just wait for the end of the month. There we go. So basically, the way the trading works is you have to set up in a trade route. You hit that establish, and then you can see it is established. And then you have to choose whether you want to import or export. So we are going to want to be exporting charcoal to sell it. And now you set how much charcoal you want to have in surplus. So I'd say 50 should probably be fine in surplus for right now. And then the way to actually make it happen is you assign one family. And as you can see, we should have those people running over quite fast. And I believe they'll bring some charcoal over as well. Let's see. The trader's going out, and then the rest of the family bringing stuff here. And we should start to see money pop up around this when they actually sell. said that. I promise we'll see it. I'll point there. There it is. There is the first trade. So that will continue to go. It'll take a little bit, but it's definitely worth it. 
So we should be able to upgrade our church now. Let's see what else we need. We're going to need that tavern supply and then we need a supply of clothing as well. Luckily, we can actually do the clothing supply. I forgot about this. So let's go to one of our houses that doesn't have something in back. And as you can see, we actually have more options now. So you can produce ale from malt. We have a blacksmith workshop to produce tools, spears, and sidearms. We have the joiner's workshop for the production of wooden parts and shields. We have the cobbler's workshop for shoes, tailors for clothes, cloaks, and gambesons. And finally, we have the boyer's workshop for war bows. So the easiest way to deal with this, at least in my opinion, for the, to have the extra clothes is to just build the shoes. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure those are made out of leather, which makes our job very easy. Put that up to very high. We can actually take our person off of planks as we have enough planks for a hot minute now. And we're actually doing a pretty good on logging as well. You can, as you can see, our forester hut is slowly replanting trees around here. We don't need the person on berries and our deer should be fine. Okay, so let's go back to our artisan workshop that we just built, the cobbler shop. What? Maybe it's not built yet. Oh, maybe it's because I think it just built, only builds one thing, so it does it automatically. If it was one of the places where you could build, build multiple things, like I'll show you. We do the joiner's workshop right here because we're gonna we're gonna want to do that anyways because we're gonna want to sell some of the stuff in there as well oh we don't have anyone assigned um we can probably take someone off of how are we doing on stone for right now yeah we're doing good on stone so we'll take them off <laughs> oh for now again i apologize guys i'm slightly sick so apologize for the coffee and stuff but we have the joiner's workshop with a small shield, uh, it basically takes one plank and it outputs one small shield, and those sell very well as well. <clears throat> Oops. So if we go to uh, military small shields, it is quite expensive to open a trade route, but as you can see, we are getting quite rich, so it is not a big deal. So let's establish that trade route. We're going to export. And we're going to say that basically we don't want any desired surplus. So we're going to export all of those shields as well. And now that we are actually using our planks, we can put the guy back into our saw pit, which means we will, and our logging should be fine. And now, because we have so much extra money, we can actually start building more of these things. So I'd say in these backyards, I'm going to want to put some chicken coops and we'll just get a bunch of extra chickens. So this one I will do vegetable. And the reason is, is if you have a bigger backyard, the more production a vegetable garden will make. This isn't actually true for chicken coops, as I'm pretty sure that's all the same, but it is true for vegetable gardens. So we'll have a couple of vegetable gardens on the side. I don't think these have room, which is just fine. This is a cobbler shop, that's the joiner shop. Oh, and one other trade route I actually want to open is the one for our shoes. And while we do want our own shoes, we can still make quite a bit of money by selling some of them. So I'd say that our desired surplus is probably around 15 or 16. That's more than enough shoes. And those will sell quite well. And we'll get an infinite supply of those as well. So with all of this trade set up, we are going to be making a ton of regional wealth, which in turn will allow us to import every, anything we need which our next thing that we will need is a tavern supply and we cannot grow barley because if you look, our barley is abysmal. The fertility just isn't gonna happen in our region. So we're gonna have to import some barley or import some ale just itself. So if we go take a look, barley is 12, it costs 12 to import. What about our, um, what about ale? Or malt. Malt is 14 to import. I don't know if we, wonder if they actually sell <laughs> like ale on its own. Ale is 18. So we could either choose to import the barley or not. I think I'm going to say may as well import it just for funsies. The other thing I'd say is it's probably a good time to start building our weapons and stuff. So 
let's get a blacksmith um, shop going. And then is there anything else here that we want? We can't build an armor's workshop right now. <coughs> well, we could do like a bowyer's workshop. That might be fun. That is going to hurt us on our families, though. We need to get some more families. So 24 families, and we actually don't have enough living space anymore. Didn't even realize that. Um, so I shouldn't have built those yet because we need some more families, but that's okay. We can take these guys off of logging and then uh, build ourselves some more um, houses. Let's just do that for now. I think that looks good. Honestly, um, where are our houses? H. H is the hotkey to build houses off the bat. I think we're just going to put them right here. How about this build? What? What's going on here? I don't actually don't know like what was wrong with that. I don't know why it's being weird. Guess we can try over here. There we go. Oh, and don't forget, I always forget, time to import another ox, and eventually we can up upgrade these to the small stable, which gives us two table space, or stable space as well. Are they actually coming to raid us? Or, oh no, they're on the very far side. But they may be coming to raid us all the way from over there, I'm not sure. I feel like that's why we got that uh, notification, so we may have to take a look. We do have a, a fair big, fairly big militia, and we can take a look at our blacksmith and see what we want to build. Well, we already have the spear militia, so why not just build more spear militias, right? Oops. So let's do the spear and then the Fletcher shop. doesn't actually say what it's building, but I'm, I'm, I'd assume it's building boats, right? Maybe? Hmm. Um, we do need to build a smithy, though, so that we can actually have the... or a bloomery to change our iron bars. Which are... where are they? Yeah, iron ore and two iron bars. Another thing that we could do is we could just import weapons because we do have our good trade route set up as well. But I would say let's make this the highest priority. Another thing we could do is we could also just hire mercenary companies too because we have enough money to do that. So we have lots of options. I'm going to try to set up our own armies, but um, mercenaries should be an easy uh, bet as well to deal with this. If they come into like our territory, I'll hire the mercenaries to deal with them. Put one person there. Honestly, probably don't need anyone else uh, making the clay right now. It's not really important. And we probably don't need this person mining right now either. Uh, another person in the clay thing just to make more clay. And I do want to see if they're actually making more spears or not. Oh, they're close, actually. I didn't realize they were so close. They moved fast, bro. Okay. Treasury funds insufficient. What? Oh, I forgot to hire mercenaries. You have to have treasury funds, not regional funds. That's my mistake, guys completely forgot about that part where we have to build the manor which is five wood see it what confuses me is it always says it's locked but it's actually not even though there's a big red lock on it you actually can just put it down so i hope we're not screwed this may be the end of our thing 
Um, let's rally our militia right here and see if it can fight off these bandits. I don't know if it's going to be able to pull it off or not. I have heard that the armies are pretty strong. but Okay, so select the units with your left mouse button. Hold and drag to select multiple units, just like our normal RTS. Command the selected units with the right mouse, right mouse button, then hold and drag to form a line, and alt while dragging to keep the formation while multiple units are commanded, and then control, left click to draw waypoints for a single squad. Okay. The combat strength of your units depends on many factors. We've got stances, morale is willingness to fight, fatigue, soldiers become tired when running, but we're still going, and then effectiveness is attack and defense multiplier. The unit might have a hard time fighting uphill or archers will struggle while shooting in the rain. So let's take a look at our enemy. We got 18 of those, 18 of those, and then we got our spearmen. Is there anything we can do to them right now? Doesn't look like we can upgrade them. So let's just move them up this way, I think. Hopefully they actually move out. I don't know. Yeah, default stance, that should be fine. Oh, we can actually right click on them. That might work just fine. Let's do that, just, just see what happens. We've got our first battle coming up. They do see, the pathfinding seems to be a little bit wonky whenever you give them a different command. Yeah, that's definitely like a little bit weird. But that was an interesting sound. Well, let's see how this goes. happens if we do push forward. Oh, interesting. I don't know if we're actually winning this fight or not. Might be then. I maybe should be focused on building up our mana real quick. <laughs> just put it like right there okay welcome to the castle planner this is a work in progress obviously here you can edit the layout of your castle and plan the construction of new wings and towers so that is fine we will put an outer tower right here um, just so that we can shoot those guys and for now, that should be everything that we need. We can build the rest of our stuff later. And then we definitely want this to be the highest construction possible. And maybe that will finish before we lose this battle. It doesn't look like it's going too bad. We still have 18 people against 12 and 8, 16. definitely help if we had like some archers and stuff but I think we might win this it's looking pretty close but oh I didn't mean to do that I might have actually just lost this battle Loki Yeah, I just completely forgot that you can't hire mercenaries um, until you have your own treasury. That was my my fault. We might be fine though, honestly. See, I'm not sure. Like, if your attack frequency is halved and your defense is doubled, I guess it depends what your attack and stuff is. You know, I just don't really know.
a little bit worried that no one seems to be building that. Let's see. Effectiveness is 4%. That's not good. 68%? What? That's crazy, bro. What if we do stand our ground? Does that increase our effectiveness? It does. Very interesting. Maybe I should have been doing the standard ground the entire time instead of the. that really like it says it increase our effectiveness but low key like I feel like we're dying off a lot faster now I don't know definitely like That was pretty easy, okay. I see. Um, let's go to our blacksmith real quick and see if you can actually build anything. Or maybe sidearms. See what happens with that. Okay, archery. Touch. I don't like the reform, I don't know. I guess they can shoot from there. Can they? shoot a little. Are they actually shooting? It doesn't really look like they're shooting. What's going on here? What? Do I need arrows? Is that the issue? What's going on here? Oh, there we go. That's not good. Oh, there we go. Looks like they're running. Well, that was quite the mess. Um, and I was not prepared, but you know, that's how it goes. And in the next time, I definitely will be prepared. So anyways, I think that is a good place to end off this video. Um, definitely hasn't been the smoothest run, but I'm learning just like y'all. And I'm very excited to go through this or through the rest of this, um, like throughout the week and stuff. And yeah, let me know in the comments below if there is anything that you specifically want to see. I'll have a bunch of videos coming out, but I'm very curious. Um, I've never been in the position before where I have early access to something that the public doesn't. So again, thank you to Hooded Horse, but... Um, I don't really know what people want to see in this position. I figured, you know, off the bat, I'd just do some gameplay. But if you want to see something specific, if you want to see like a beginner's guide, um, if you want to just go through all the menus and everything, I figured I'd at least like make a video on all the help menus just because people may be interested in that. But um, other than that, just let me know. I really appreciate it if you made this far. You're the absolute goat and I appreciate it. So um, I'll see you next time and thanks for watching, y'all. Oh, and you can expect the ne next episode of this to come out pretty soon as well.